Let's talk about my big, big box. Ooh. Brother, ooh. So I have this um, fabric box that I bought in a home store nearby me and I am keeping my immediate TBR in it. I am defining my immediate TBR as the books that I am most excited to read and that I would like to read before I get to anything else. The rest of my TBR books, let's say I've kind of put them away in such a way that I can't really access them right now. So I just have to focus on what's in this box and I'm not going to try to access any of those books until these books are all read. Now, will I finish all of these by the end of the year? Likely not. We have like about 15 books in here and this box does not include the books that I have to read for school. So um, I would say maybe hopefully by the first quarter of, I would say hopefully by the first quarter of 2025, I, I could read out everything that's in this box and there's a possibility that I might, you know, acquire a couple new books in between that'll make their way into the box. I don't know why I keep lifting it up to show you, like it's, oh my god, you know, an unboxing, oh my god. It's Sephora sent me their new collection. I'm gonna start off with the fiction that I have in the box right now. So some of these books I am currently reading, like the first one, which is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is one that I've been talking about on the channel as of recent, you would recall my previous vlog where I spent 35 minutes talking about this and other books and other things going on in my life. And I was just basically dragging Rochester for the entire thing because I absolutely hate him and I think he's the worst thing to have ever happened in a novel. Um, I still have about 150 pages left. I have not touched this book in two months and I'm okay with that. I think I will just get back to where I was and I will remember most of what had happened. So yeah, um, this one I would like to start back maybe next week or week after or something. Hopefully I could finish this in like August, September. After I finish that, I would love to move on to Wide Sagasso Sea by Jean Rees. This is supposed to be a kind of a backstory of the woman in the attic from Jane Eyre. Why did it take me so long to remember the name of a book that I literally just talked about and I'm currently reading? Okay, five brain cells, five functioning brain cells. So Wide Sagasso Sea is also regarded as a Caribbean classic because Jean Rees was actually born in the Caribbean even though she was like a white British lady for the most part. And so I guess she saw some of herself in the woman in the attic from Jane Eyre because I believe that woman whose name was Bertha or something. I think she was also from the Caribbean. Like there's a lot of connections to the Caribbean and to Jamaica specifically with Jane Eyre and this book takes place in Jamaica even though Jean Rees was actually from Dominica I believe. So yeah, Wide Sagas, we'll see. Looking forward to that. Another Caribbean classic here we have The Suffrage of Elvira by V.S. Naipaul. Naipaul is an author who I want to read more of. He's basically like the most famous author to ever come from Trinidad and he's like one of the most polarizing <laughs> authors in the Caribbean literary canon. Lots of people love him, lots of people hate him. He's a controversial yet impactful and important figure. Suffrage of Elvira is his second novel, I believe, and the reason why I would like to read this is because it may be relevant to my thesis because for my thesis I'm focusing on Islam in Trinidad, broadly speaking, and this book seems to sort of look at Hindu, Muslim, tensions that may have existed around the time that he wrote this, which I believe would have been the 1940s or 50s. Yeah, this was published in 1958. So it's kind of focusing a little bit on the tensions that existed between Muslim Indians and Hindu Indians in Trinidad, which was a really important like issue that cropped up during the years before and after independence in 1962. So I think this will definitely be a very relevant read for me. The next book that I would like to read soon is Passion Tide by Monique Rafi, which is also set in Trinidad. This is a book that is apparently the first ever, one of the first ever Caribbean novels that really focuses on the Caribbean feminist movement, specifically in Trinidad, and actually centers around something that is inspired by a true story. A few years ago, a Japanese woman by the name of Asami, who was visiting Trinidad as she did every year for carnival was murdered during carnival by some evil person and the murder I don't think was ever solved. Not only did that spark outrage across the country but the response from the I believe it was the mayor of Port of Spain at the time was really horrible. He basically victim blamed her and it led to a lot of protests, a lot of feminist protests and so the book is kind of about a similar situation to that and I believe it is somewhat narrated by the soul of the woman who 
was killed, at least parts of it are. That's all I know about this story and I'm really excited to go into it. I actually went to the book launch thingy that happened a couple of weeks ago for this book and that's where I got it. And actually the same day that I got this book, I bought another book at the same bookstore which was paper based in Port of Spain and it is called Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. This was shortlisted for the Women's Prize this year and I just read the back of it and saw that it was by a Palestinian author. It was a story about a Palestinian woman who returns to, I believe it's historic Palestine, to Haifa in order to visit her sister. And then she ends up getting involved with a local theater group and they try to put on a production of Hamlet, but they have to face a lot of obstacles in order to do so. I'm guessing it may have something to do with the occupation. And I'm very excited for this. I've heard a lot of good things about The Parisian, which was one of her other books. So when I saw this and I saw that it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize earlier this year, I was like, okay, I need to I need to give this one a go. I also have Temple Folk by Aliyah Bilal. This is one that I included in a book haul earlier this year. This is a collection of short stories all about black Muslims in the United States. And it's probably one of the first of its kind, really. I'm very excited to read this because I've always wanted to read more literature from the perspective of black Muslims. And so when I saw this one, I knew that I absolutely had to get it. And I've heard great things about it since. So I'm very intrigued to read this one. And whenever I'm ready to dive into a short story collection again, because I have to be in a mood for short story collections, I will go with this one first. Then I have this book here. This is When We Were Sisters by Fatima Asghar. I don't know too much about this book other than it's about three sisters from a Muslim family who were orphaned and I believe the book also explores queerness or queer identity to some extent. What I like about it is that it is also written in a very kind of, um, I don't know what you would call that, more sort of experimental way because the author is a poet and she is known for her poetry first and foremost and I believe this may I could be wrong, but this may be her first novel, her first work of prose. Yeah, I honestly think this is probably their first full-length novel, if not, apologies for being wrong, but looking forward to this as well. The last two fiction books I have in here are, of course, the fifth and sixth, no, the fourth and fifth books in the Wayward Children series by Shannon Maguire. If you've been keeping up with my videos, you'd know that I was reading these books this year. I read the first three books and I have been enjoying them a lot so far. They're not like the best things I've ever read. So after I read these books, I'm going to see how I feel about it. And if I really enjoy these, then I will continue on with the rest of the series. And if I really, really enjoy them, then I will continue buying the rest of the books in the series because even though the books are short it's a lot of books I think they're up to 10 now but if you think the series is worth it like if you've read up to, to book 10 or you've read far into the series definitely let me know if you think I will enjoy them a lot more going forward but I will see when I read these two um, next up I have some nonfiction I the first two of which I'm also currently reading this one I've had on pause for a while as well this is 10 minutes about Israel by Elan Papi this is a really really brilliant breakdown of the history of Zionism, what it is and how it is in fact a colonialist white supremacist movement and a history of the state of Israel and how it was established and imposed onto Palestinian land at the expense of the lives and livelihood and happiness and peace of Palestinian people. And how he does it is he goes through some of the 10 biggest myths that are constantly used to justify the state of Israel and he debunks all of them through a historical perspective. Elan Papi, as I said, he's Israeli, but I don't think he lives in Israel anymore. He's known for being a very anti-Zionist uh, Jewish person who was from Israel. So if that's something you're concerned about, I think this is still a very safe read. I'm also current. I started this book, not yesterday, but the day before. It's Azadi, Freedom, Fascism, Fiction by Arundhati Roy. This is a collection of essays and speeches from Arundhati Roy that were given or published between 2018 and 2020. The book itself was published in 2020. And it's about freedom, fascism, and fiction. It's about injustice. And it specifically refers to the Indian context because Roy is obviously a very well-known and profound and prolific Indian writer. I've never read any of her fiction. The only book that I've read from her before was Capitalism, A Ghost Story, which was also really brilliant. And really this book is meant to be a critique of fascism in India and the rise of the BJP and the right-wing movement in India, but also its history and how 
Indian people have stood up against it and how the government continues to punish people for standing up against it. It's a really fascinating read and I have a feeling it's probably going to be one of my new favorite nonfiction books. I also have another book on Palestine here. This is Palestinian Walks by Raja Shahida and this is another one that I included in that same book haul that I hauled Temple Folk in earlier this year, my birthday book haul. This is a book that is supposed to be about this author's experience, I guess, going to Palestine, being from Palestine, going back to Palestine, and talking about the ways in which the Israeli occupation has specifically affected the landscape and the environment of Palestine. Because the occupation doesn't just affect people, right? It also affects the land itself. And historically, we know that colonialism has always had devastating effects on the ecology and the ecosystem and the environment of the lands that people have colonized, right? Okay, just two more books. We have Hijab Butch Blues by Lamia H. This is the author's memoir. She is originally from South Asia but grew up in the Middle East and then moved to the United States. And so she's talking about her experience as like a, a double, triple immigrant but within the context of also being queer and Muslim. And I think this book, from what I can gather, is about how she sort of reconciled her queerness with her faith and how she, you know, looked into her own reinterpretation of Islam in order to, I don't want to say validate her queerness, but I guess, you know, find a place for herself or, or pave her own you know, path within her journey as a Muslim and as a queer person. Sounds fascinating. I'm very excited to read this one. It's one that's been on my list for a while and I've heard nothing but great things about this. And oh yeah, I have one more. One more. We have The Essential Rumi, right? Which was translated by Coleman Bax from Persian, I'm assuming. Persians and Afghans call Rumi Jalaluddin Balki. He was born in September 30th, 1207 in Balkh, Afghanistan. Balkh. Sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Which was then part of the Persian Empire. Miss Thing was old. And then it goes on to talk about his relationship with Shams and how that led him to become a poet and how his relationship with people. This man was... Yeah, so Rumi, okay? Rumi. I'm, I'm very... I don't know what else to say. It's Rumi. And it's a collection of... Um, I don't know what the... The, like, if it's all of his works, it's probably some of his works, um, but I'm gonna read it and let you know at some point. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it for the video. Those are books that I would like to read, hopefully, soonish, sometime in the future. If you have read any of these books, if you think that I should get to some of them sooner rather than later, please let me know in the comments down below. And also, just because I like to engage with y'all and I like to read everybody's comments, please let me know if there's a book in this pile that you would like to read, or if you had to pick one or two of these books to read, which would they be and why? And if you don't want to leave any comment, just leave an emoji in the comments down below so I would know that you're here. What emoji should you leave? You should leave a box. Leave a box emoji, okay? That way I know you made it to the end of the video. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely day, and until next time, inshallah, keep reading. Oh, by the way, um, I just have to say this. Plastique was robbed. Plastique was robbed. That finale was rigor morris uh congrats to angeria i love angeria but um plastic was very much so robbed boots the house down like that talent show was incredible she and chanel should have been in the in the finale i'm sorry vanji won that final lip sync i don't know if people are ready to talk about that and if i had to crown one of the three of them i would have just crowned roxy but i do love me some angeria so i'm not mad at the end of the day let me make my let me do my thumbnail but we could probably do like a little teaser, like me pulling out something. Oh, there, yeah, this looks. Maybe, is it? But thanks for tuning in, bye.